Hello there. So here at Refinitiv, we're always looking for ways to provide insights and ideas to our customers. Now, clearly, COVID-19 is going to be front and center for uh, a long time to come. But one of the other themes that has emerged and is really important um, is around volatility. Right? A lot of our customers are asking how they can look at that, how they can gauge it, and how they can screen against it. So what we thought we'd do in this series is take a quick look at how to use data from Refinitiv to do volatility screening in a dynamic fashion programmatically, right? easily using our APIs. So anytime we talk about using APIs from Refinitiv, um, it's important to actually just make sure everybody's aware of the developer portal or developer community site. Currently, we have more than 30,000 developers um, that are part of this community. And if you go on the site, you can get everything from documentation to tutorial videos to um, PDFs. To, and you can use the Q&A forum for any questions you might have. So that's an important resource to point out. But today we're going to talk about using Python and, and Jupyter with um, the icon Data API or Affinitive Workspace. So we've created this works this um, Jupyter notebook that's you can download and view offline afterwards or tinker with um, as you see fit. So the first thing we're going to do is actually import the libraries that we need, um, a front and center being Icon, as well as authenticate to the Icon Data API using our app key. Um, next, we're going to just bring in a broad view of the VIX, right, which is our overarching guide of volatility levels, right? So we want to take in a closed price for the VIX for the last few months on a daily basis. And then we want to plot that. And of course, we could use the charting tools and plotting tools within Refinitive Workspace and Icon as well. Um, but we're looking to do something programmatic, right? So we want to be able to replicate things over time dynamically. So here's a view of the VIX. Not a huge surprise, right? Um, huge spike in March, retreating down a little bit in April here. Um, but let's plot this against other VIX indices to see how it stands up against things like oil, right, or treasuries, which might have a different view. So if I plot that again, I can see from from a um, overall perspective, actually, um, the VIX is is lower than oil considerably, right, but higher than treasuries, and really around the same level as some of these companies that are in the S&P, which is what we'd expect. So we have a broad indicator now of where volatility levels are. If we look at the VIX, I think it's 41.67 is our last value. Um, now let's do a screen, right? Now in screening, Icon and Refinitive Workspace has a great tool to facilitate that called screen. So if you go in there, you can actually pick different criteria that you want to screen against, and that'll provide a list of companies based on that. Um, so we're going to run that screen, and I'll explain what we've done. We've decided to, to do this against our the main criteria being a 10-day volatility level. And we've kind of put some manual levels in here and said, OK, anything between 0.01 to 50, we want to screen. And I've excluded a few things like OTC, um, pink sheets, and um, um, investment holding companies. Um, so once we have that screen back, right, we can we can start to take a look at what that is. So we get 388 results. Um, and But now the, the downside is I have to go in manually every time and change this based on what the market volatility is. I don't want to do that, right? And that's where Python really comes in handy because we can create these variables that will allow us to do that. So I'm basically going to insert these variables that I've created for high and low levels directly into our screen, and I'm going to rerun it. So it's always going to have the screening criteria based on what the market levels are, are showing for that. And so as a result, I'll get a a constantly dynamic list of companies that meet the criteria that I've set. So let's take a look at that data. There is the uh, subset of the data, so it looks good. And now let's see what we get back. So we have about 190 names that we can explore and delve a little deeper into. And this is where things like our Refinitive um, sector classification really come into play, right? Because we can use those now to break down and look at the industries and see what things are trending. So we can see that the top industry right here is software and IT services. So let's delve a little deeper into that and see what that looks like. Um, so based on that, I've taken, an, again, another, another screen. I've, I've run that again against just the software and IT services companies looking using the 10-day vol um, again. 
But let's get an overall volatility profile for these, uh, these stocks. So if I do that and you can say, well, how do I know all the volatility um, fields that you have available or definitive? Well, you could always go to the data item browser and you could just type in volatility and it'll actually show you how many fields we have, which ones we have. It'll give you definitions of each of those as well, right? So I can see what does it mean to have a 200 day moving volatility. Um, so we have a lot of details there on the, on the fields themselves. But I've done that. I've pulled back a volatility profile for these target stocks. And then this is, again, where Python uh, comes in handy, right? We have a, a wealth of different visualization and analysis tools that we can draw upon. So in this case, I'm going to use Seaborn to just do a quick heat map and, and view of, of this universe, right? So I can take a look at volatilities over time and see which ones have been higher and lower uh, on different periods, right? So a couple ones that really stick out to me that I would like to get to know a little bit more about are GDYN. And that's where the power, again, of Icon or Affinitive Workspace comes in. G-U-I-D-N, uh, G-D-Y-N, sorry. I can come back and actually look at these companies to say, okay, what is going on with this um, you know, grid dynamics holdings? Um, what's so special about it? What's the story around it? Um, so I have these tools that I can interact with. Now, once I've done that, maybe I want to take a more non-vol look uh, across these um, companies that I've gotten, right? And that's where some of the proprietary tools that we have really come in handy, right? Things like our star mine estimates data, right? Around um, uh, earnings per share, right? Is there a predicted surprise, positive or negative based on our analysis? Um, what does the new sentiment look like, right? Um, what is the recommendation from analysts? What kind of score do they have on ESG? So I can start to do this more traditional view of screening and analysis. Um, but I've started with volatility um, to really get that, um, that perspective first. So in a nutshell, that's how you can do a volatility screen using the tools of Icon and Refinitive Workspace in a programmatic way with the API. Thank you for your time.